Hey everyone, welcome back. Since we've covered all the different types of factoring, today we're going to go over a summary of factoring. Let's look at the steps to factor any type of polynomial. Remember, step one is to always factor out the GCF. This is probably the most important step. Factor out the greatest common factor from your polynomial and then move on to step two. Step two asks, do you have a special type of factoring? Remember, if you have four terms, you can factor that by grouping. If you have two terms, a binomial, you probably have the difference of two squares, the difference of two cubes, or the sum of two cubes. If you have one of those, you follow one of these given formulas. Or you could have a three-term polynomial. If this is the case, you can factor as we normally factor, or you can try to identify if it's a perfect square. If it's a perfect square trinomial, you factor following the perfect square trinomial formula. And then step three, which is just as important as factoring out the GCF, is to check. Check that your polynomial is completely factored. So let's look at a couple of examples. We're going to factor completely if possible. Number one, 2y squared minus 4y plus 4. First step, do we have a GCF? Of course we do. We have a GCF of 2. If we factor out the 2, we get the polynomial y squared minus 2y plus 2. Step 2, we look at this remaining polynomial. It's not four terms, so we can't factor by grouping. It's not two terms or a binomial. It's three terms, but it doesn't appear to be a perfect square trinomial. So let's see if we can factor it any other way. We need to see if we can find two factors, m and n, that multiply to two, and at the same time, m plus n add to negative two. Well, the factors of two are one and two. But there's no way that we can add 1 and 2 and get a sum of negative 2. So for this example, we were only able to factor out the GCF of 2. So our factored form is 2 times y squared minus 2y plus 2. Let's look at example 2. 4b squared minus 12b plus 9. We don't have a GCF, so we can move on to step 2. Do we have a special type of factoring here? Maybe. That first term, 4b squared, is the same as 2b squared. And then that last term, 9, is the same as 3 squared. So if our middle term is the same as 2 times the root of our first term times the root of our third term, so 2 times 2b times 3, which is 12b, since 12b is the same as our middle term, we know that we have a perfect square trinomial. And since this perfect square trinomial has a negative or a minus sign for the second term, we know that it factors as the root of the first term minus the root of the second term, all squared. Let's look at example 3. 6z to the 4th minus 21z cubed minus 45z squared. Well, do we see a GCF? Of course, we see 3z squared. And when we factor out that GCF of 3z squared, we get 2z squared minus 7z minus 15. Now this remaining polynomial doesn't look like any of the special types of factoring, so let's find the factors m and n that multiply to a times c, or negative 30, and remember at the same time m plus n needs to add to negative 7. So what are our factors of negative 30? Um, how about 2 and 15 
those multiplied to 30, but they'd never add to 7 or negative 7. 3 and 10, or negative 3 and 10, well, negative 3 plus 10 gives us a positive 7, so what if we look at the factors 3 and negative 10? They multiply to give us negative 30, and they add to give us the negative 7. So remember, we use these two factors to rewrite the middle term of our polynomial. Bring down your GCF, keep your first term, we're going to rewrite our second term using those two factors and keep our third term. Now we factor by grouping. 2z squared and negative 10z have a 2z in common, which leaves the binomial z minus 5. The second grouping has a 3 in common, which leaves the binomial z minus 5. Don't forget to put that all in brackets and bring that GCF down again. Now we can factor out the binomial of z minus 5, and we're left with the binomial 2z plus 3, and of course our GCF. That wasn't too bad. Let's look at example 4. Well, do we have a GCF? We have a GCF of 6z here. We factor out the 6z and we're left with 1 minus 4z squared. Now we have two terms, so is it possible that we have a difference of two squares? Well, 4z squared is definitely the same as 2z squared. What about 1? Well, remember that 1 squared is the same as 1. So yeah, we have the difference of two squares. Using the formula for the difference of two squares, we can rewrite this difference of two squares as 1 minus 2z times 1 plus 2z. And then we bring down our GCF. We're doing great, so let's look at a few more examples. Example 1, 5a squared minus 27a minus 18. I don't see a GCF, and this doesn't look like any of the special types of factoring. So let's look at an m times n, two factors that multiply to our a times c, or 5 times negative 18, which is negative 90. And remember, at the same time, m plus n need to add to our b, negative 27. Wow, those are big numbers. Well, let's look for factors of negative 90. Or we can look at factors of even the positive 90. 1 and 90. That could never add to negative 27. What about 2 and 45? Nope, doesn't matter which one is negative, it still won't give us negative 27. What about 3 and 30? That could work. If we have a negative 3 and a positive 30, that multiplies to negative 90, but it adds to a positive 27. But if we have a positive 3 and a negative 30 for our factors, that adds to our negative 27. So we can use these factors to rewrite our middle term. That gives us the polynomial 5a squared minus 30a plus 3a minus 18. Now use your associative property and group the first two terms and the last two terms. Factor out the GCF of the first two terms, 5a, and we get the binomial a minus 6. The GCF of the second two terms, a 3, and we get the binomial a minus 6. 
Now, they both have this binomial in common, so if we factor out the binomial a minus 6, we're left with the binomial 5a plus 3. That wasn't too bad. Let's look at example 2. 3rt squared plus 33rt plus 90r. Do you see the GCF? Yeah, it's 3r. Factor out 3r, and we get the polynomial t squared plus 11t plus 30. Now, does this remaining polynomial look like any of our special types of factoring? No, not to me. So, let's use our m and n. So, m times n have to equal 30, or m plus n equal our middle term, 11. Factors of 30 that can add to 11. Well, factors of 30, we have 1 and 30. No, that doesn't work. 2 and 15. Nope, that's 17. 3 and 10. We're getting closer. That one adds to 13. Ooh, how about the factors 5 and 6? Those multiply to 30, and they add to 11. Since we didn't have a leading coefficient here, these two factors are the factors of our binomials. So we have 3r, our GCF, and then our factored polynomial t plus 5, t plus 6. That one wasn't too bad. Let's look at example 3. Here we have 6n cubed plus 2n squared minus 10n. Do you see that GCF too? Yeah, it's 2n. When we factor out the 2n GCF, we're left with the polynomial 3n squared plus n minus 5. Well, this remaining polynomial doesn't look like any of our special types of factoring. So let's see if we can factor it using the factors m and n. Well, m times n have to equal 3 times negative 5, or negative 15. And m plus n need to equal our middle coefficient, or 1. Factors of 15. Well, we have 1 and 15. That certainly can't add to 1 and then 3 and 5. That also can't add to 1. So I guess this is fully factored as 2n times the polynomial 3n squared plus n minus 5. Let's look at example 4. 2a cubed minus 16a squared plus 32a. Let's pull out the GCF, 2a, and that gives us the polynomial a squared minus 8a plus 16. Do you see it? That first term and the third term of our polynomial are squares. a squared and 4 squared. So if this middle term, 8a, is the same as 2 times the first a times the second 4, it's a perfect square trinomial. And it is. 2 times a times 4 is 8a. So we use the equation for a perfect square trinomial. Here we have a perfect square with a minus sign for the middle coefficient. So it's our first root minus the third root, all squared. And then we put that GCF in front. Have a question or a factoring problem you want help with? Leave it in the comments and I'll include it in one of my next videos. If this video was helpful, subscribe to my channel for more math tutorials. Thanks for watching. See you next time.